Okay. Uh, let's talk about um, reverbs and delay, time-based effects. So time-based effects. Um, uh, the way I'm going to talk about them is the way most people use them. <clears throat> and the way most people use them is they, um, they use them pretty subtly. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> there's a saying that says something like, if you can hear, if you can hear the effect, this is most of the time. This is not all the time. This is what people are doing most of the time. If you hear the effect, then you've got too much of that effect in there, right? And so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the way, um, I'm going to talk about it in the way most people use it, uh, use time-based effects. And that includes echoes, delays, which is kind of the same thing, reverb, uh, chorusing, flanging, phasing, you know, that sort of thing. Things that change the time of stuff, right? So I want to talk about delays first, right? And so I end up using delays a lot more than I do reverbs because I think they, I think they sit in the mix better, right? Reverb's kind of an obvious effect to try to make it not so obvious that you've got reverb. It's, it's kind of hard. Um, and so... Um, um, I like to use delays. It makes it, I don't know, it just kind of sits in there, right? But the trick is to make delays, to make them sit in and not be so noticeable, the trick is to uh, uh, equalize them and do stuff to them to where they will sit in, right? Most of that, most of that, most of that is EQ, right? So, um, so let's talk about it. So, uh, first of all, what is a delay, right? Well, it's like an echo, right? And so, let's say you're at the Grand Canyon. Again, this is a lot of review for some of you guys, right? But let's make sure everybody's on the same page. So, <clears throat> so, let's say you're at the Grand Canyon, you yell across the canyon, your voice travels across the canyon, bounces off that wall, the canyon wall, and uh, bounces off the canyon wall. So, you say, hello, and it bounces off the wall, and you hear, hello. There's another there's another rock or something that it bounces off me. There's two or three. It's, hello, 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 hello. Stuff like that, right? So it's a discrete. We're talking about a discrete, uh, a discrete echo, a discrete repetition of something that you said or you did, right? A discrete sound, right? And so, uh, if we think about all these, if we think about what happens there, there's a lot of uh, it's actually more complex than it seems, right? Because the sound is leaving your mouth. It travels through the air, right? And as it's traveling through the air, uh, maybe in audio one you remember this, but um, as, as sound travels through the air, it loses high frequencies. Oop, there's a cat. There's, there's Bailey. She got into a tussle. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry about that. So, yeah, she's got a little thing there. She got into a fight with somebody. Anyway. Uh, so, um, there's a lot going on. So, tra sound travels through the air. As it travels through the air, it loses high frequencies, right? And so, as it, as, so as it travels and hits the wall and then it comes back, it's losing even more high frequencies. Not only that, but as it's traveling through the air... There's a um, there's what's called Doppler effect. You've heard of that, where if you're standing on the side of the road and a car goes by, honking their horn, it goes like, yeah. or a racing car, yeah. right? And so, as sound travels towards you, right, it tends to pitch up if it's moving at a speed at, at a good clip. So as it's moving towards you, it pitches up. As it moves as it moves away from you, right, as the car goes by, it pitches down. Right, so that's the Doppler effect. Well, you're going to get the Doppler effect with with delays, with an echo, physically an echo. Right. <clears throat> Oftentimes, I'm trying to make, maybe not even me, a lot of people who are mixing, they try to make the, um, they try to make the um, uh, the delays sound natural. Right. <clears throat> and so, 
like they're real, right? Um, sometimes not. Sometimes you want it to be kind of crazy sounding, but um, uh, uh, I'm trying to make them sound real most of the time, right? I want it to sound like there's a wall there or there's you're in a room or something, right? Anyway, uh, uh, so when I'm adding the delay effect on stuff, right? I need to think about EQing the delay, the echo that comes back. I need to EQ that so there's not so much highs in it, so it actually sounds like an actual echo. Same thing, I might add a little bit of pitch shifting to the echo itself, not to the original voice, but to the echo, to kind of make it sound like it's kind of real, right? And we're talking about a very small amount, right? So how did they do echoes in the old days, right? Well, I have... Somewhere. Here we go. <clears throat> I got a chart. Right? It's backwards. Here we go. And I got a pointer here. So here's Elvis. <laughs> here's Elvis. Right? This is like in the 50s. Right? Here's Elvis. Right? Let's say he's singing. And it's going to the main mix over here. Right? And let's say you wanted to have an echo going on. Right? So... What you do is you turn up this aug send, right? and of course, as we know, the aug send duplicates Elvis's voice, right? The original one stays in this channel and goes over here to the main mixer, main main fader, but the but the the duplicate that this aug sends makes, the duplicate comes down here and goes into a tape machine. <clears throat> now a tape machine uh, has three heads, even the brand new ones, right? The, the, the modern ones, they have three heads. One erases anything that's on there, the old stuff. The then there's a second one that's called, called the record head, and it actually records the music or whatever it is you're trying to record. It records it, right? And then the third head, right? It's a magnetic head. The third one uh, is the playback head where you actually listen, right? So as it turns out, those heads are not in the same place. The erase head's here, literally, about an inch and a half, two inches away, is the record head and another inch and a half, depending on the machine, there's the playback head. So you can never, um, there's, there's, I won't say never, but if you're listening to the tape machine in a particular way, you're not going to hear the recording until it comes over here, right? So what's happening here is there's a physical delay. There's like a two inch delay here, right? right? Between Elvis's voice and this one here, right? And so you send this over here, comes over here, the tape machine delays the signal, and then you send that back to another channel over here, to the echo channel, right? So then you hear something about donuts, and then you hear the echo about donuts over here. <coughs> Elvis liked donuts, apparently. Right? So that's kind of how that works. So, um, um, well, there you go. That's how it worked, right? Now, if you needed repeats... Right? If you needed to hear donut, 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 right? To, to mimic the sound of three surfaces or four surfaces, what you would do is you would send the echo to the echo, right? To, the way we get echo in Elvis's voice is we turn up the aug send and send it to the tape machine. And then there's the tape machine applies a, a, an echo, a delay because of the physical, right? And then it comes back over here. And if you send the echo back to itself like this, you echo the echo, right? And that's how you got you get repeats. You change the delay time, how how many how much time there was between the echoes by making the tape machine go faster or slower, right? So that's how that worked. Right? Now, uh, we'll we'll mess around with some stuff here in a second, but let me show you some famous echoes. There we go. Here we go. We're going to go to this guy here. Aha. All right. This is a super famous echo. Oops. This one here. Uh, this is called an echoplex. All right. The epo this is basically, it's a tape. There's a tape inside of there. And it actually went around and around in a circle. All right. And you change the delay time by moving the... Pl so this you didn't change the delay time like the old school, like the Elvis thing from the 50s. The way you change the delay time is you moved the playback head, right? The, the, the record head and the playback head are, again, on a professional tape machine. They're an inch and a half, maybe two inches away from each other. And that the, that's that physical delay. Here, 
With this guy here, what we're doing is we're picking this up and moving the playback head up further away or closer to the record head, right? So this is uh, pretty old. This is from the, I, I think from the 60s, right? A lot of guitar players love these. You could actually use them in the studio as well, right? Uh, but they're, so those have long since been discontinued, but check this out. This is a, a new, uh, uh, this is a new tape echo. This is a company called Full Tone. They make guitar effects. This basically works exactly the same way. The electronics are almost exact identical, right? There's a few differences here, but again, this thing up here where you see my mouse, this, you, you move the, the, the playback head closer and further away to the record head, right? And the further away... It moved the the uh, um, the longer the delay time. That's pretty cool. These are really expensive. They're about a thousand bucks. By the way, you can use this. You can use these in the recording studio. Their their input will take a line level input from from a from a mic preamp or from a mixer or from Pro Tools or whatever. Right? That's pretty cool. And it'll all the way go down to the guitar level stuff, instrument level. Right? People love these. Uh, they're about eleven hundred bucks, right? This is a, a vintage. Uh, of course, they don't make it anymore. Vintage Roland Space Echo. Basically, it worked the same way. There's a there's a tape in a loop, right? It's pretty cool. Um, this one had a, a pretty different sound from the other one, but um, uh, it's kind of cool, right? You can do reverb effects with it, right? So what is reverb? Well, reverb is just a bunch of echoes very closely spaced together, right? So close together that your ear can't discern each individual echo. It all blends into one thing, right? So anyway, here's your reverb. You can actually go reverb, right? Depending on how many repeats and how close the echoes were to each other. Pretty cool. This guy is a, uh, uh, a Telray... Uh, this is a Telray Echo. Believe it, well, those of you who know anything about chemistry know that you can actually store an electrical charge in chemicals, right? That's how your car battery works, by the way, right? And so this company that made this thing actually was not an audio company. They were like a chemical company, and they were, they were developing, this is like in the 50s, early 60s, they were developing some product for somebody else. And, uh, uh, and whatever they were doing was like a, it was like an oil, but just a bunch of chemicals. But they called it an oil, right? Another word for these kind of delays are an oil can delay, right? But anyway, it's a can. Inside of there, there's a can, and there's like a, a, like a bunch of chemicals that are like an oil, right? And when you run electricity through it, it actually stores. It's like a capacitor, right? It stores momentarily an electrical charge and then releases it, right? Well, we know a microphone takes acoustic energy and turns into electricity, right? So you could actually store, <laughs> pretty crazy, right? Uh, you store the, the sound, quote unquote, right, from the microphone, and then it releases it, right? It's kind of a, kind of a cool thing. And, I, and it's <laughs> pretty crazy. Uh, the, uh, uh, the chemicals are so hazardous that the EPA like in the late, actually like 1966, 1967, uh, outlawed the use of those chemicals. And so they had to discontinue this, <laughs> they had to discontinue this, um, uh, uh, this, e this echo. Um, you can still get them on, on eBay and places like that, but they're pretty, they're pretty cool sounding, right? Not hi-fi at all. By the way, the way this worked was, or the, way, the reason it got its name was, was this company whatever company they were, whatever company it was, they were developing something. And this guy, the guy that discovered this thing, uh, was doing this thing with the oil can, and he ran his, he ran his voice through this microphone or whatever, and ended up in the oil can. It came out delayed. And, and uh, he was so amazed, you know, that he was like, he was so excited that he came up with this thing. So he, he yelled to the other employees in the office, he said, tell Ray, tell Ray was the boss. Hey, tell Ray, tell Ray. So that's how it got its name. Right? Here's another picture of the tell Ray. There you go. It's an actual thing you carry. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. There's another one. You know what? Uh, there's a, let's see if I can find. 
I'm going to do this here. Let me pull this guy over. I wanted to show you another one. It's called the Benson Echo Wreck. Images. And the inside of it. This guy. Ah, check it out. That. Yeah. It's crazy. So this thing here kind of worked. It worked the same way as a tape machine, but it didn't store the magnetic energy on tape. Right? It did it in a different way. But if you take a look here, these are all heads, record heads and playback heads. Right? And there was a bunch of heads. Right? And so you would, you could get multiple echoes and different rhythms and all sorts of crazy stuff. This is maybe late 60s. Right? But, uh, this was this could be heard like on like Pink Floyd's the early Pink Floyd stuff, right? By the way, all those old the tape echoes and all that kind of stuff you hear that stuff all over the fifties and sixties, tons of it. Even the Tel Ray stuff, right? Anyway, Vincent Echo Wreck, pretty cool. Right. So there's that. This is uh, now moving into the 80s here, late 70s, early 80s. This is a digital delay. There's a bunch of stuff I'm skipping through, but to, to run it, make it kind of quick. This is uh, a uh, 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 a delay unit from like the like I said, or late 70s, early 80s. It's a, one of the first digital ones, right? It's pretty cool. Highly coveted. You'll pay a ton of money. People love this thing. You'll pay a ton of money for it. Oops, sorry for that distortion. You'll pay a ton of money for this guy, right? Even nowadays. Here is a... This is a Lexicon Primetime. This guy... Um, again, an, an early digital one. This thing sounds fantastic. Uh, one of the studios that I've worked at had one of these guys. Such a good sound. Um, pretty cool. There's all these different controls for modulation and delay time. and It's all pretty cool. And it actually had two... Um, uh, uh, two delays and two outputs and two ways to modulate the signal. Pretty cool. Really good. By the way, the reason I'm bringing some of this stuff up is because if you're in a recording studio, if you're doing an internship or assistant engineering thing in a, at a decent studio and you, you want to work, you want to be doing your internship at a good studio, a studio that's busy and has a lot of good gear and a studio that is well known that's where you want to do your internship um we'll talk more about internships later on in the semester but that's a really important thing so if you're in a if you're work if you're doing your internship in a recording studio that is a good place to do an internship in you're going to see this equipment you're going to see this stuff right and uh uh it's not like you're going to learn actually no, you're not going to learn how to use this particular piece of gear, but what you learn in class and when you start fiddling around with digital delays or, you know, whatever, um, or plugins, a lot of plugins, this thing's emulated in plugin form, uh, you'll definitely know how to use it, right? Uh, but you, what you don't want to go into studios like never, oh, I don't even know what that is. Well, yeah, you know what this is, a vintage piece of gear, highly coveted. Um, you may not know how to use it, sort of. You can figure it out pretty easily. But, uh, yeah. You want to... I hear a dog. This guy, let me show you this guy here. This is a, this is a uh, TC Electronics 2290. Classic piece of gear. Super classic piece of gear. Um, uh, this thing here is a, a, a digital delay. Um, uh, had tons of control, um, <laughs> look, it's kind of a crazy looking unit, but with the, like the red lights and everything, but, uh, again, from the eighties and into the nineties, uh, a pretty cool box, um, very versatile, um, mostly a studio stuff, right? Now check this out. This guy is a modern recreation of this thing here. Pretty cool. This this is a um, uh, you you can buy this plugin. There's a plugin that you buy from TC Electronics, and it goes into a plugin like in your DAW. But this is the controller. This guy here is the controller for 
uh, the, the plug-in. So it's an actual physical controller, and it mimics basically the 2290 and the algorithms, right? The delay algorithms and the sound is, from what I understand, I haven't played with it yet, and I believe we're going to have this one at the Highland Mall, at the Highland Campus. I think we're going to have this one. Anyway, it's a plug-in. It's controlled by this guy here. Um, and it mimics the sound, the feel, everything about the 2290. That's very, very cool. Right? Oop, so there you go. There's a bunch of delays. Right? So there's a bunch of classic delays. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. Um, most of them plug-in delays that are... Actually, you don't see a lot of people making uh, delay hardware delays. And the reason is, is because... Uh, digital ones, plug-in ones, are very, very, very good um, uh, at delays. And that's there's no reason to spend a bunch of money on some, unless it sounds way better, like those vintage ones sound amazing. But unless you can get one of those, there's not really that much of a point in getting a delay, you know, a hardware delay. Uh, save your money and buy a plug-in that's just about as good as a hardware one. Just about. Right. Anyway, uh, there we go. There's some delays. I'll come back with uh, with some uh, uh, some stuff to play around with. All right. See you in a second.